Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first ever live stream from the London School of English. We're going to wait a couple of minutes for you all to arrive to the session on how to learn English in lockdown with one of the expert trainers from the London School of English, Emma Palmieri. We hope that uh, wherever you are. Hi, Emma. Hi. Hi, everyone. We we hope that wherever you're joining us from the world, uh, you and your family and close people are keeping uh, safe and well. And uh, it's a pleasure to see you in this session. Uh, my name is Olga and I'm part of the London School of English team. Before the start of the session, I would like to mention that this session is interactive. So feel free to participate in the live chat next to the video. And if you have any questions, you can write them in the chat. And we will attempt to answer them during the session. Uh, we would also have uh, live questions and answers at the end of the session where Emma and our colleague uh, Pfizer from the client services team, hello, hi Pfizer, hi. Hi, uh, would help you with them. Uh, now, without further ado, hi, I'm, nice to see you. <laughs> I'm delighted to introduce you to my two colleagues, hi. Emma hello. and Pfizer. So hello everybody, I'm glad to see those who have already joined and Barbara and Helen, lovely to see you. As Olga said, my name's Emma. Some of you know me already. Um, I'm a trainer at London School of English and I've been teaching English for over 10 years. It's a long time in uh, Japan and in Italy and in Ethiopia, in many countries to many different people. And I love it. And I've been at the London School of English in West London for about 10 years now. And this is my colleague, Pfizer, and she works in client services. Pfizer, would you like to introduce yourself? Yep. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Faiza. As Emma said, I work on the client services team, um, supporting our clients with finding the right language course for them. Um, I've been working at the school for four years now. I myself studied in the UK. Um, I'm Canadian, but I grew up in the Middle East. So I know what it's like to be a student studying abroad, and I hope that I can help to support you if on your language journey too. Um, without further ado, I will pass it along, I will pass it back <laughs> to Emma even so she can get this started. But thank you so much for joining us from all over. Yes, thank you, Pfizer. So I don't need to tell you, we're living in very strange times at the moment with coronavirus. I know in my life, there's been lots of changes. Instead of going to the London School of English in West London, I'm sitting at home and teaching some wonderful students. It's a big change for me. And I imagine you're going through similar changes yourself. Um, I know some people um, are unable to work at the moment, other people are working from home, which has all sorts of challenges, I know, with the internet and other things. Other people with children, you might need to keep them occupied, sometimes home educating because schools are closed. So many different things have changed. Um, maybe, I know some people were planning to visit London, maybe study with us, um, maybe go on holiday, and unfortunately, at the moment, that's no longer possible because of the lockdown. So what the next 30 minutes is going to hopefully help you do is to find ways in the meantime, while this lockdown is going on, to improve your English, to make use of your time from home, to uh, feel more confident in your spoken ability, in your listening, perhaps become more accurate in your grammar, expand your vocabulary, so that when the lockdown does stop, you are in a much better position to pursue that job opportunity or travel around the world or do whatever it is that you want to do because you have used your time productively to improve your English. So let's go and see if we get some good ideas from this. As um, Olga mentioned, please let me know. Hello everybody who's joining the course. If you've got any questions and post them at the side, I might answer them during my talk, or I might answer them at the end. It depends on, on how time goes. So let's begin. My first suggestion to you is Meetup. This is a website that in normal times, people use to meet each other, to meet socially. Um, and it's a good way to find people with similar interests. Maybe it could be a music interest, a sports interest, film, it could be many different things. And so the idea of Meetup is to find people with similar interests to meet up together in London or New York. Of course, now at the moment because of lockdown, people can't go to pubs to meet, to chat about these interests. So instead, they've turned to online meetings, which for us, for the purpose of learning English, is so much better 
because instead of being limited to our geographical region, so if you're in Vienna, or if, for example, I can see Fred N, hello, Bulgaria, if you're in Bulgaria, you can uh, only meet in Bulgaria. But online, of course, you can meet anywhere in the world. So you can meet people in New York, you can meet people in London, you can meet people in South Africa. It's a wonderful way to meet new people who share your interests. So I would recommend it as an excellent way to speak to other people, obviously listen to what they say. So you're practicing your speaking and you're listening in a sort of perhaps um, uh, a form of a bit like this. So for example, Zoom or another kind of similar situation. Also your writing skills if you're messaging. So it's a really good way to practice your all round English skills, make friends from all around the world and to develop your interests. So. Um, whatever your interests are, you will find something relevant to you. For example, for me, I found a really interesting session on Dutch art. I'm a huge fan of Rembrandt. <laughs> so I'm hoping that, you know, I'm going to follow that and see if I meet some interesting new people. And I don't really need to practice my English, to be honest with you. But still, it's a good way to meet new people, especially when you're feeling a bit lonely. Sometimes in the lockdown, you could find yourself feeling a bit isolated. So if that is true for you, I think this is an excellent website to use. OK, now, if you're a bit more serious as a student and you would like to like sort of improve your accuracy, improve your grammar, then there are another couple of suggestions I have for you. And um, the first one is a website called English Page. English Page is a website which has many, many um, exercises and explanations of English grammar. I find it particularly useful for tenses. So if you want to improve your tenses, if you feel that you want to have more confidence about when to use, for example, the past simple, the present perfect, you know, sometimes I find that's really quite confusing. Um, so if you want to have more exercises to practice that, to have it explained to you, English page is a very good place to go to. If you want something a bit more structured, which looks at lots of different um, grammatical topics and works through um, uh, different levels, so you feel that you've got a sense of progress going through, um, the London School of English offers its own online platform called London School Online. <laughs> it's quite logical. And um, this, I think, is very good to give you a sense, as I said, of progress, to feel that you're continuing to, to build on what you know and move forward. This is not free, but you can buy it as a package. However, if you um, decide to follow one of our online virtual courses, which are run by experienced trainers, the students from around the world, um, it is part of that package. So you get the online facility as long as your virtual classes, your real-time virtual classes, you have the online package available for the period of your course and also afterwards as well for a limited period afterwards. So that could also be something you'd want to think about. If you're interested, please ask my colleague Pfizer at the end of this session. Now, let's look at academic research, okay? Academic research, what does that tell us about the best way to learn English? I think it tells us, well, I don't think it tells us, actually, it tells us, it tells us that the best way to improve our English is to read, to read. In fact, to learn vocabulary, to use it properly, you have to see a word seven times. Seven times is quite a few times, isn't it? And so therefore, the more you read, the easier it will become, the vocabulary will become more automatic, you'll remember it better. Hello, Constantine, you just joined. So um, I would recommend reading as much as you can. Now, students, in my experience, often intend to read. They have the best of intentions. <laughs> but where do you find the time when you've got so many different things to do? So um, I've got some suggestions for you, depending on how much time you have, whether you've got lots of time sitting at home or whether you really don't have very much time at all. Um, if you have more time, you might want to think about reading a novel, okay, a longer story in English. Obviously, there are many, many to choose from. Read something you enjoy. That's my number one piece of advice, okay? Um, if you don't enjoy it, you're going to find it really hard to motivate yourself. So read a kind of literature you enjoy. 
If you enjoy detective stories, read detective stories. If you enjoy science fiction, read science fiction. Um, if um, you feel that you're a bit scared about reading in English, you're worried you don't understand, um, sometimes if you know a book in your own language first and you know it quite well and you enjoy it in your own language, maybe try to find that book in English and read that book in English because you already know that story. So you don't have to worry about following the plot or who the characters are. Um, the classic example of this is Harry Potter, of course. Lots of people read Harry Potter. Maybe it's not for you, but I know lots of people do like it, including myself. So if it is a book you enjoy and you've read it in your own language, try reading it in English. It will be easier and you'll get more benefit from the language. If you're not quite sure where to start, there are a couple of suggestions I have. Um, Agatha Christie, you've probably heard of, a very famous um, detective writer. Her stories are very easy to follow and her English is quite simple. So that's a good one to start with if you're not sure where to start. Um, a more recent author is Alexander McCall Smith. He, again, it's detective stories, but he writes with a bit more humor and he bases his stories um, mainly in Botswana and in and Scotland. So it's a, it's a very interesting to see ways of life in those countries as well. And I would recommend those stories. If you're really not sure where to go, where to start, um, Google Books um, has um, lots of um, novels, just the first few pages of them. So it's free, so you're not losing anything. So you can go online, go to Google Books, type in the kind of book you're interested in, the title, and just read the first couple of pages. If you don't like it, you haven't lost anything. And if you do like it, maybe you would like to order it online and have a go at reading it. Um, we've got some other ideas here now for you. Um, yes, okay. So if you always intend to read, but picking up a book you never get around to doing, you don't have time, I've got a couple of suggestions, of course. So uh, The Economist magazine, um, you might have heard of it. It's quite a famous magazine. It's very well regarded for political um, writing as well as economic writing, of course. It writes about culture. It covers all, a range of topics. They have an app. It's not free, but the price is, I don't know, five, six euros, something like that. Um, so it's not very, very much at all. And um, you get sent to your mobile phone the top five news stories of the day. OK, so you don't need to remember to pick up a book. It's sent to you. <laughs> um, so it's quite good. It's in five news stories every day. And I think the benefit of it being an app is that on your phone, you can press the word and it tells you look up. It comes up with a look up button. If you press the look up button, it gives you a definition of the word. So it's very good if you're not confident about learning, or about knowing the vocabulary, it will help you learn the vocabulary in that way. Um, so another thing you can do, again, sent to you, and this time it's free, everybody prefers it when it's free, of course, um, is the Cambridge Dictionary blog. You need to sign in, you need to register, um, but it's free and it's sent to you once a week to your email this time. And it's a blog, um, not too long, with lots of useful words, useful vocabulary. And again, it's a very good way to improve your range of language and to also to practice that language that you do have to become more confident that you're using it correctly. Also here at the London School of English, we have a blog, which I suggest you sign up to. And if you're interested, Pfizer can also tell you more about this at the end. It covers lots of interesting topics and it also has lots of very useful language and items of vocabulary that you can look at, often themes on parts of British culture. So if you're interested in finding out more about British culture, it's a very good thing to refer to. My last topic on this on reading is the BBC. Now, you all know the BBC. We sometimes call it auntie. because It's like a member of our family in the UK. And it's a very good source of news and of um, life stories about people. For example, at the moment, there's a really interesting, very heartwarming story about a man called Captain Tom, who has raised a lot of money for hospitals in this period. He's raised millions of pounds by walking around his garden. And today is, its hundreds, today is his hundredth birthday. 
So that's a lovely story, really heartwarming. It makes you feel really positive in this quite difficult time. And again, it's, it's quite an easy uh, read on the BBC and it will help you extend your vocabulary. Now, maybe you think, oh, all this reading, what am I gonna do with it? How is it gonna be really useful for me to improve my English? Well, in addition to what I said before about having to see a word seven times, I've got a couple of ideas of different activities that you can do to help you um, really challenge yourself and to test your language ability. Okay, so I've got two main ideas. Let's look at the first one now. Okay, um, you can use the news to test your language skills by making two copies of whatever news story that you have. So um, the first uh, copy you just put to one side and the second copy you blank out a certain type of word. OK, so um, I often recommend prepositions because prepositions in English, mm, as you know, difficult topic. But it could also be articles. It could also be quantifiers. If you want to, you could also use verb tenses, but you would have to make a list of the verb vocabulary. You blank out those words. So let's say you choose prepositions. You would get some tipex or you would use copy it onto a Word document and you would leave blank all the prepositions. So for example, I am going mm, New York. You wouldn't put the two there. Then you wait, <laughs> however long you want, say five minutes or maybe a day. And then you come back to the blank document and you try to remember and you try to work out what word went in the blank space. So you go, mm, I'm going New York. I'm going in New York. Mm, maybe not. Mm, oh, I think going to New York. And you write it in, I'm going to New York. And then after you've finished all of them, you compare it with the original, with your first original article. And then you can see if you were correct or not. Maybe you got them all correct. Well done you, you're very good at prepositions. Or maybe you didn't. Maybe you think, mm, Goodness me, prepositions are difficult. And then maybe you want to go to London School Online or English page and review your prepositions. So that's the first activity. The second activity is a translation, okay? So this is comparing how your language is different from English. So some languages have different word order, some languages use articles and don't use articles. So see how your, in, your language compares to English. Um, so I did this when I was studying another language. I got an um, uh, uh, article in Italian because that was the language I was learning. I then translated it into English, which is quite a good test of how much I understood, wrote it all out in English. And then tried to translate it back into Italian. So for you, back into English. At that point, you realize really how much you can do this or not do this, okay? And then you compare, again, your version with the original version. Um, and I think it's quite useful for identifying where you need to do more work or being more aware maybe of word order or being more aware of, for example, of adjective position or being more aware of the use of articles, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a really good way of thinking, mm, now I need to work on this area of my English. OK. OK, so uh, let's move on now to listening skills. OK, listening is an area I find that um, many students struggle with when they arrive in London. Um, they are perhaps used to a certain accent. In London, you have many, many different kinds of accents. It's a very international city. Indeed, in the UK, you have many different kinds of accents. Then you think of America, then you think of Canada, then you think of South Africa. It, obviously, there are many, many different kinds of English accents. So it's really important to uh, work on your listening skills and to try to um, work on them with as many different accents as possible. Um, because it's difficult to predict in the future who you're going to be talking to, <laughs> what accent they're going to have. Um, so there are some suggestions I have for doing this. Hi, Mariel, you've just joined. Hello. <laughs> so uh, 
first thing is a very famous program. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, Six Minute English from the BBC. It's famous because it's good, basically. So if you haven't heard of it, I strongly suggest you start investigating it. As it suggests, it's only a six minute program. It's quite short, but it's a what we call a magazine program. It's like a discussion of a particular topic. The topic could be um, on um, happiness in everyday life. It could be about um, mobile phone etiquette, how to be polite using mobile phones. It's all sorts of interesting topics. And it focuses on a few um, key words, items of vocabulary. Um, and I think it's a really good habit to get used to listening to this program. They change it every week. There's a new program every week. There's a huge catalog of old programs that you can listen to. So those short programs, very accessible, very easy for people of, say, intermediate level of English. And I think, you know, the more you practice, the better you become. So um, I suggest you check them out. If your English level for listening is a bit lower, or if you know somebody who could benefit from English um, directed at a lower level, I would recommend a program um, run by the Australian equivalent of the BBC, the Australian Network. And this program is on YouTube in short videos, and it's called Living English. Now, this uh, program uses a soap opera, like a short part of a soap opera, which is a sort of a program about people's everyday lives. It shows a two minute clip of this, this drama, and then it looks at the language that they use. So the language is all in context. For example, it might show oh, um, people meeting their friends at the airport. And then it looks at, OK, the language of meeting people, the language of introductions, and it breaks it down. It looks at the grammatical side. It looks at the vocabulary side. There is lots of pronunciation work, repetition. So it could be really good, especially if you don't have much confidence in your listening or your pronunciation to build up your confidence. And um, hopefully um, give you um, that sort of self-belief to communicate with people in the real world. If you just want to have fun, OK, if you like music as well, English music, um, I recommend a website called Lyrics Training. Lyrics Training is a bit like karaoke. I don't know if you enjoy karaoke, <laughs> but I do. I love karaoke. When I was in Japan, I went every weekend. I loved it. And so I'm very fond of Lyrics Training. And I think it's particularly good, obviously, for listening, but also for pronunciation. Um, if you hear the words and you um, see them, as you see them on the screen in lyrics training, it really helps you to connect the two, understand them better, but also produce them better. So it's a kind of game lyrics training. You have the video of the song and you have the words at the bottom, but there are some gaps in the word and you have to type in the words that you hear. It's not necessarily easy, so I recommend you start at beginner level. They have different levels, so you start at beginner level. But it's good fun. I mean, if you don't take it too seriously and you just enjoy listening to music, just relax, have fun, just listening to the music, seeing the words. That will help your pronunciation. That will help your listening. And as a, a, um, I can't see your name, it's, it's in Thai, I think, at the bottom, but you're right, your listening skills are connected to your speaking skills. So if your listening skills improve, your speaking skills will also improve. So yes, you're absolutely right. Of course, we're living in the 21st century. We're living in the world of podcasts. Many, many different podcasts you can choose between in English. Some of them are quite long, some of them are quite short. They're on a whole range of topics and most of them are free. So make use of them. Um, students often ask me which ones I recommend. It depends on your interests, is my answer. <laughs> so, uh, for example, lots of my students love football. If you love football, then there's a really popular podcast by a guy called Peter Crouch, who I'm told is a striker. I know nothing about football, <laughs> but my husband tells me he's a striker. OK, but he seems to be a really nice guy. I've listened to his podcast and even I enjoy it, even though I'm not that into football. It's a really warm hearted conversation between him and other footballers discussing football, but also other topics. So if you're interested in 
uh, in football or even just want to listen to a nice chat in English, I'd recommend the Peter Crouch um, podcast. If you want something a bit darker, if you like murder mysteries, then there's something called Case File, which is very popular at the moment, looking at a different uh, story about true crime. And if you want something a bit lighter, something less serious, a bit more funny maybe, there's a really lovely podcast called Animal People with super vet Noel Fitzpatrick. And Noel Fitzpatrick is a celebrity vet, so an animal doctor, and he talks to other people on his podcast about the joy, the happiness, that animals bring into people's lives. So it's a, it's a really nice topic, isn't it? It's a really happy topic. And I recommend that um, maybe you want to listen to that in these times and it makes you feel more cheerful. Of course, there are all kinds of podcasts you can listen to. Just choose the ones that you enjoy. Okay, um, I see that somebody's written a comment about resources to check your pronunciation, Niraj Tripathi. Okay, so um, I, that's a really good question. Pronunciation and listening are very closely connected, as I said. So um, things like lyrics training will help you. But also, you've reminded me, sometimes I suggest to my students with six minute English, it's a really good idea to use your phone, your mobile phone. You have an app which records your voice. And what I sometimes suggest with Six Minute English, you can see the script and listen to it at the same time. So what I recommend they do is they read one sentence from the script on the screen and they record it into their phone. Then they listen to the people talking in the program and compare it to their pronunciation and maybe try to um, notice sounds which are different between your pronunciation and their pronunciation. So that can be a good way say, to notice the difference because as I'm sure you will know, noticing difference, whether it's in your written English or your spoken English, your pronunciation is a first step towards improving your English. When you notice it, when you know what the problem is, then you're in a much better position to improve. And also on uh, the BBC Learning English website, there is also a pronunciation page, which is very good, looking at particular sounds, looking at particular English language features. So maybe if you notice you have a problem, for example, with the British th sound, classic problem, um, you can go on to the BBC Learning English pronunciation page and that has some advice to help you as well, okay? Right. Um, Emma, I was just going <laughs> to jump in there too. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, with, with a few of the resources as well um, that students can use if you're looking for your pronunciation. So on the blog that you were mentioning earlier, um, we do have one with the phonetic alphabet. So we found that to be quite popular for people to understand what the pronunciation could be. Um, You'd also mentioned the London School Online platform. Similarly, on there, you can have clips of what something should sound like. You record yourself, you listen to that recording, and then you listen back to the pronunciation. Um, and on our platform, we try to have many different accents. So you'll yeah. hear British accents like Emma's, you'll hear Canadian accents like mine. <laughs> um, you'll hear American ones. I think we have some Irish and Scottish ones too. Um, yep. Because in an international world, as you said, I think at the very start, you'll you'll be talking with people with many different accents. Um, so those are resources. And if you would also like, um, we do offer voice and accent training specifically to individuals to help them um, with improving their pronunciation. So that's something if you want, um, you can let me know and then I can send you some more information. But it's a great question with, with lots of answers. So we thought we'd let you know. <laughs> Indeed. So if you want something truly personalized, that's probably the best way to go. So lots of people are saying if you want individualized feedback, well, if you want individualized feedback, personalized feedback, you need a teacher, really. So again, we offer those services online if you need them. OK, so I've suggested lots of things you can use to practice your listening, lots of things you can use to practice your reading. And when you're doing that, 
you're learning lots of new words, lots of new vocabulary. It can feel sometimes a little overwhelming, all these new words. And in the past, we might have written them in a little notebook. I know I did when I was at school. I had a little notebook and I wrote down all the new words in a notebook. And for some people, that's an excellent solution. Um, for me, I found I left that notebook at home and I never looked at it personally. <laughs> so what works a lot better for me when I'm trying to learn new languages is an app called Quizlet. Now, Quizlet is free and you can get it again on your phone, on your mobile phone. So it's always with you. And in this app, you enter the new words that you're learning. You need to open an account, but it's free. Once you've entered the new words that you're learning, you have all loads of options for playing games, testing yourself, matching games, um, trying to define things, writing definitions, spelling games, all sorts of things. And it gives you um, what well, tracks your progress as you're going through. So it says, oh, this word, this word you're finding really difficult to learn. You need to review this word more. And this word, you're fine. You've learned this word. It's OK. So it's a really good way of uh, motivating yourself also to learn vocabulary, because if you're learning the same words that you don't need to, you're really wasting your time. You need to be focusing on the ones that you're finding difficult, the ones that are most challenging to you. And this app helps you do that. And as I said, it's free. It's on your phone. So it's always with you. So sometimes if I'm waiting for the bus, not now, <laughs> but when lockdown finishes, I'm sure I'll be waiting for the bus again or doing whatever in the house. You can use it to practice um, your vocabulary. It's always with you. OK, uh, the next suggestions I have for you um, is when you have uh, time to spend with your family. So as I said at the very beginning, um, some people are finding they're at home with the whole family, having to keep them entertained as well as working, as well as doing all the normal chores that you have to do around the house. So how do you keep up with your English in these circumstances? Not easy. It's a challenge. I think the key is to make it fun. If it's not fun, it's really difficult to motivate yourself to do it. So try to find fun ways to study English. It's possible. I promise you. The first way is a film night. I find it, this works best when you um, have the same night a week, maybe a Tuesday night or a Friday night. You schedule it in. Tuesday night is English film night. Um, and you sit down with the whole family and watch a film in English. With the subtitles or without the subtitles, both are useful. Um, if you don't have time for a whole film, maybe you can consider a TV series or even something like The Simpsons. That's all fine in English. Um, and then afterwards, maybe you have dinner together afterwards and you discuss in English. Someone's asking me how to practice your speaking, your spoken English. That could be a good way to do it. Um, you discuss in English what you've just seen. Um, again, if it's a regular activity, I find you're more likely to stick to it because it's every Tuesday. So it's automatically, it's Tuesday, it's English film night. We're going to discuss it together after dinner. And because you'll be talking about different TV series or different films, you'll be using different items of vocabulary. Of course, use your phone dictionaries or use the vocabulary you have in your head. It's just stimulating. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. It's your family. It's your friends. <laughs> Nobody's correcting your English. Or maybe they are. I don't know. Depends on your family. But it's another way to practice. OK. And it's the most important thing is to feel relaxed in speaking your English. Um, another way, if you're home alone, if you don't have a family around you to, um, to practice speaking with, is a WhatsApp group. I think we all know WhatsApp. We use it very regularly, at least I do. And um, to make a group, and perhaps once a week, perhaps once a month, if once a week is too regular, you watch a film in English and then you set up a WhatsApp group to discuss it, to chat together. Did you like this film? Did you not like this film? What did you think of this character? Was it realistic, not realistic, et cetera, et cetera. OK, now, as I said at the beginning, some of you I know were planning to come to London. It's not possible. 
So maybe you were hoping to visit some of our key cultural sites, visit museums, Buckingham Palace, different art galleries. At the moment, it's not possible. Let's hope it all lifts soon and we're able to travel again. In the meantime, however, yes, good. So Abdur Abdurrahman, he says he's coming back in mid-June. That would be excellent to see you. That would be wonderful. So in the meantime, there, the museums, the theatres, the galleries have been very clever and offered online tours. Most of them are free. Even the ones that aren't free are significantly cheaper than they are in, in real life. For example, I don't know if you know Andrew Lloyd Webber. He produces lots of very famous um, musicals on the London theatrical stage. For example, Phantom of the Opera, Cats, etc. Um, they are offering um, a live streaming service on, not live, sorry, <laughs> a service on YouTube where you can watch a performance of these shows. You need to sign up to this website that's showing up on your screen now. But once you've done that, you can go and enjoy a different show every week. There is a price. I can't remember exactly how much it is, but it's not very much compared to a real ticket. It's worth investigating. If your tastes are more highbrow, that's more to be more cultured, more high class, as it were, and you prefer Shakespeare, then you also have an opportunity. The Globe, you might know the Globe, it's next to the Thames, um, also has um, an opportunity to uh, watch a performance of one of their shows. Again, they change it every week um, and uh, you can watch it and again, improve your listening skills through that. However, I do advise you practice your reading skills by reading a short summary of the play if you're watching Shakespeare beforehand. Even I do this <laughs> because Shakespeare's plots can sometimes be a little bit complicated. So if you read the plot beforehand, that does help you follow the story a lot more easily when you're watching it and enjoying the language, enjoying the performances more rather than struggling to understand what the hell's going on, which is going to be quite easy to do with Shakespeare. Finally, the British Museum, one of the finest museums in the world. And despite its name, it's about world history, not just British history. It's called the British Museum because it's in Britain, but it's about world history. It has amazing different things you can see inside it. Um, and it's got an excellent interactive website, I have to say. Um, it's on your screen now. And it has all sorts of videos. It has all sorts of um, uh, short articles about the most um, interesting um, artifacts that they have. And you can um, find them depending on the country you're interested, the time you're interested. So if you're interested in 15th century Chinese art, you can follow that. Or if you're interested in um, Mexican culture from 2000 years ago, you can follow that route down there. And when you come to London, hopefully very soon, um, you can then look and uh, find the things you're most interested in in the British Museum. It'll be like visiting old friends in the museum. You'll recognize them from the website, which is a very nice thing to do. I'm going to finish with some ideas that you might have for your children. Okay, so for example, uh, if your children are quite young and they're learning lots of new English words, I've got one idea with these. These are post-it notes, okay? Post-it notes that you stick on the walls. So you might use an online dictionary. I think Olga's going to post the link now. An online dictionary and your children can find the objects in your house on the online dictionary. For example, door, window, lamp, radiator, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They find these words in your online dictionary and then they write them on a post-it note and they stick the post-it note on the door, the radiator, the window, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If this is a bit too easy for your children, you might want to add a verb like um, clean the window, switch on the light, switch on the radiator, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to make it a bit more challenging. And then if you want to test them, you can take all the post-it notes down, mix them up, and then get them to put them back up again. So you're testing their reading skills. So it's a good way to get your kids to expand their vocabulary. And in the meantime, you might also learn new words and new phrases. 
If your kids are a bit older and um, are perhaps really into science, um, we have a British inventor called James Dyson. He invented a Hoover. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's quite famous in the UK. And he has come up with a whole set of cards that um, you can download from the internet and give your children different challenges to do. Now, in order to understand what to do, they obviously have to read the cards in English and it's quite a detailed um, um, uh, instructions. They're quite fun things to do, I think. So like you can hold a balloon car race or make an underwater volcano. So it <laughs> sounds all quite fun. Um, and obviously they're learning science at the same time as learning English. So I think that's a, you know, a really fun thing to do together. Last thing, I think we're running out of time, apologies, is um, cooking. So this is a win-win situation. In English, what we call a win-win situation where you get two benefits together. Uh, and this is you get your dinner cooked at the same time as teaching your children English. Excellent. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver is a very famous British chef. His son's called Buddy Oliver, and he has his own YouTube videos about how to cook. So you can sit your child in front of this video, let them watch his video in English, improve their English, about how to make this delicious meal, and then send them to the kitchen, and they have to recreate this delicious meal. So that's another, I think, quite fun way to get them to improve their English. Okay, I think I'm running over time now. So... <laughs> Thank you very much for your comments. You've got loads of really positive um, feedback there. So I don't know whether my colleagues, Pfizer and Olga, want to come back in at this point and um, we can sum up all together and perhaps take any questions. Perfect. Thank you very much, Emma, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, and, uh, we have had uh, questions from the audience and uh, we also have some questions uh, that we frequently get that we will address. But please, if you have any questions uh, now, um, meanwhile, uh, keep writing questions in the live chat window. And uh, if we don't manage to get to answering all of them during the session, uh, we would also share our email address to which you can send your questions so we can follow up. Absolutely. And uh, we've had some really nice comments uh, from uh, from different users. Uh, for example, Mario is saying, thank you very much, Emma. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed a lot uh, spending this uh, time. Uh, uh, then also, uh, Ghislaine uh, says, thanks a lot, Emma. And uh, we have uh, comments from Helen and uh, from uh, quite a few uh, other people. Somebody but, wants um, to know when's the next one. So Frank is asking when the yeah. next video will be. We have a following. That's great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we will be, uh, first of all, we have recorded videos on our YouTube channel that you can subscribe to. And we would also be uh, continuing this live streaming sessions uh, where you can ask us any questions. Like, for example, we have some questions about business English. We have some questions about pronunciation, about listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and speaking skills. So all of those questions we'll be addressing in the uh, upcoming live streaming sessions and recorded videos. Yeah. Uh, but uh, maybe just uh, uh, just in the interest of time, um, let's uh, let's just uh, take about ten minutes to answer some of the questions, and then we will share uh, our email address so you can send them to us. In fact, uh, I'm going to share this uh, on the screen right now. Uh, you can send uh, any questions that you might have after this session to inquiries at londonschool.com or you can send it uh, um, on our site uh, just by contacting us. And yeah, so, um, but uh, there are several questions that have come in yep. and uh, let us just uh, look at them together. So one of the questions was, uh, first of all, lots of people uh, mentioned uh, that it's really good time to learn English uh, online. Emma, can you comment on this a little bit? And uh, Faiza as well? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there were questions we had about the CAE program, which is quite specialized. We've had people ask us about business English. So just to, to give you a little bit, we are offering these um, courses online for you to join in groups. So we have topics such as general English, business English, IELTS, uh, legal English. So you can join along and do a lot of the speaking practice. Um, you head on over to the LondonSchool.com to find the information. And as Olga said earlier, if you want anything specific, you can um, email us at inquiries at LondonSchool.com. 
Um, so yeah, that's what we'd suggest. I think I'd also just like to say hello to a lot of our alumni. I think we we have a few people who were here with us in Holland Park for a couple of weeks and mm -hmm. we've had participants. Yeah, we've had participants that have joined us. I, I wrote down the countries because there were so many. Um, yeah. But we've had them from Peru, from Italy, from Turkey, Somalia, Bulgaria, wow. India, Brazil. So m nearly the whole world, um, which great. is very, very exciting. So thank you all very much for joining us today. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, and there were several questions uh, about uh, about specific courses, uh, for example, whether we offer a legal English and uh, uh, also um, CAE, uh, Pfizer, could you mm -hmm. help with this question? Yeah, so because our trainers all have expertise in many different fields, um, we can offer those courses. We are running group courses for the legal English. Uh, whether you are just a student or just beginning your law career, we have a course for people who are aged between 20 and 30. Or if you are a professional lawyer who's been practicing for many years, um, we have a legal English course for people aged above 30. Um, for the CAE course, I know that Emma is one of our very qualified trainers who can deliver that, but we can offer that. Yep. Um, so we can offer that to you one to one as well. Um, we had, I think, a question somebody was asking about resources. So this is where we'd recommend the blog. Um, again, with relation to the phonetic alphabet, the last one of our recent blogs was about kind of grammar and language you can use in business English. Mm -hmm. So if you go to our website, you can sign up. Um, to see our blog posts and for our newsletter and get um, all sorts of updates. So the, those are some good resources for you as well. Mm -hmm. I think one question that I, I do get, Emma, which, I, which I'd like to ask you is, um, you know, we've, we've had some people say here, they've come to the face-to-face -face and they've really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So for you as a trainer, um, do you have the same connection with students uh, if they're online as when you would when you were teaching them face-to-face? -face? So is the connection the same? I think so. I think key to having that connection online is having small groups. So I think if you had, say, for example, I don't know, a huge group of 15 people, then it would be really difficult to maintain that same connection. Sure. But um, we're quite lucky on the platform we use because we can we have small groups to begin with and then we can break them down into smaller groups. So you can have like some one to one time with some students. You can put them in smaller pairs together. So you do really get uh, sort of that connection. And also, I think I quite like that element of almost someone you can see what's behind them and you can see what's going on in their homes. Yeah. You don't have that in the classroom. You know, so if their daughter runs in, wanted to know something, happened to me last week, their daughter ran in, wanted to know something. And then I can like sort of uh, talk about that and connect with them on that. So it's really nice to have that, that very direct view of their personal life. And um, I think I sometimes just give them practical assistance as well. So that's a nice extra, which I wasn't expecting actually when I began teaching online. Yeah, very nice. Great, uh, we have just another uh, interesting question from Asli Atai. Uh, what are your recommendations for jumping from intermediate to advanced level in English? Uh, is that a question for me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I guess, uh, oh, anyway, well, you can start and then uh, I can. Yeah. For intermediate to advanced, okay, well, that's quite a big jump, number one. And number two, I would say two key things, vocabulary reading, okay? And that's often uh, what students don't necessarily want to hear, but it's vocabulary. English is such a huge vocabulary, and a lot of it is understanding. Also, those of you that are thinking about taking an IELTS exam or maybe even a CAE exam, it's that range of vocabulary, not only oh, this is a word, I understand it means the same as please, something, but well, how is it slightly different? How would you use it in a more formal or less formal context? And um, who might you use it in talking to? Is it a bit old fashioned? Or is it a bit, you know, so it's knowing all those other things around language that is most likely to, to help you get to that extra level. And reading and, to, you know, also listening will help you be more aware of how that language is different. Some of the best students I say I've ever taught listen to English a lot, read English a lot. And I think it's really that that's helped them achieve the, the level that they have. Yeah. And I think with our group courses as well, we split everybody according to their level. Mm -hmm. So as we had it with our face-to-face -face courses, it's exactly the same with our online 
So you would, for example, be in an intermediate course for a few weeks, and then if your level progressed, you might go up to upper intermediate, and you might go up to advanced, and the content of the course will also increase but with you and develop with you. Um, we've had a question here. Uh, Frank was wanting to know how does it work with the time zone? So we actually have sessions at four times in the day so that we can cover every single time zone. Um, so we can teach from starting at six o'clock in the morning in the UK, which would be sort of afternoon or eve early afternoon, evening in Asia, all the way until 9 p.m. in the UK, which would be sort of mid-afternoon, midday in, say, South America. So uh, we have we've we've tried to make sure that we can teach you at every time uh, that is possible, so that you can you can join and learn from wherever you are. Um, so we've we've got uh, students that join us at different times. Okay, I know lots of questions about speaking. As I said, listening is one way to do it. Another thing we do obviously online if we have one to one. Practice. I would say practice is the best way to improve your speaking. And as you're speaking, not worrying too much about, oh, am I using the present perfect in the right way here? But just speaking and in a one to one teaching environment, letting your teacher do the corrections, letting your teacher say, that's an important mistake. You need to look at it and improve it. Or oh, that's not so important. I still understand what you're saying. And it's more, info more important to focus on your meaning, on your message here. So I would say practice, which is not easy, I know. <laughs> but yeah. no, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a right. it's a long journey, I would say, yeah. um, with this someone's comment. I'm sorry, I, I can't read the the Hindi. Um my parents can, but uh I, unfortunately I'm not able to, so I'm not able to see your name. But it's it's a lot of practice and it's a long journey. Um and we hope that we can we can support you in any way. Great. Yeah. But if you've got any questions, please send them to our email address. We'll be more than happy to help you. And it's so great that you could come, guys. We're really, really grateful. Yes. And we've really, I've really enjoyed sharing this live stream with you. It's been great fun. And thank you so much for your comments. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, please share with us what you think of learning English during lockdown. Send us your comments. Uh, uh, use uh, the resources that we provided uh, and consider subscribing to this YouTube channel for more videos and live streams with uh, interactive questions and answers. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, if you want to know a little bit more about our courses, uh, do consider um, looking at what courses we provide on our website at londonschool.com. So uh, thank you uh, for your time today. Thank you very much, Emma, for joining the session. It was oh, really, really oh, interesting, okay. very useful to hear. And thank you, uh, Faisa, for, uh, for helping with all of the questions related to the courses and uh, you know, how that operates. Um, thank you, uh, everyone, for your time today. And uh, have a very good rest of the day, wherever you are. And we're yeah. looking forward to seeing you back. Yeah, yeah we'll see you soon. Safe. OK. Yeah. Take Bye. care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.